ready. I'm ready to share it. If you're ready, just for the word, just say, bring it on. Amen. I open your Bible with me to the book of Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. We're kind of in a series uh, right now dealing with the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. How many of you realize there's one God, right? Just one God. And he manifests himself in three different ways. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That's according to the word of God. And uh, I am going to be focusing on the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, several things uh, across the next few weeks. And uh, we are excited um, about that. And uh, I just would, I was going to call it a conference on the Holy Spirit, but really to conference, uh, have a conference, you need to confer with somebody else. Uh, you know, so this is just the messages about the Holy Spirit today. Amen. And uh, so let's just jump right in today. Uh, Acts chapter 1 and verse number 8. Now remember, Jesus had died, buried, resurrected, showed himself alive to his disciples for 40 days, ascended into heaven. And, uh, but before he did, he told his disciples, listen, I don't want you to do anything. You're not ready yet. I want you to go, and I want you to wait in Jerusalem. And he gave them this promise. Are you ready? Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, he said, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. I want to talk to you today about something called the baptism with the Holy Spirit or the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It is an experience that is subsequent to salvation. It is something that every single believer needs in their life. Uh, John the Baptist said of Jesus, he said, he said, I baptize you with water, but there's somebody coming after me who's greater than I am. I'm not even worthy to uh, unlace his shoes, but he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit, okay? And, and so I just want to say that I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just tell you a little bit about myself today. When I was five years old, my father was a pastor, and we were holding a meeting in a tent with sawdust on the floor. That was a long time ago when those kinds of things were popular. And there was an evangelist that was preaching that night. And at five years of age, I remember the feeling that I had needing to come to the front and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. I remember that like it was yesterday. My dad prayed with me, and I invited Jesus Christ into my life. Just a few years later, I don't really know how old I was, nine or ten, maybe eleven at the most, but I remember that our, our church there in Ohio that my dad was uh, pioneering there in Columbus, Ohio, we had bought a piece of land and there was a house on it and we met in the basement of the, that house. It was an unfinished basement. Rafters could be seen, you know. There were poles holding up the house and whatnot. But they were praying for people to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I will never forget that evening because I had a Sunday school teacher who was faithful in teaching me the Word of God. And she had taught me several things out of the book of Acts. And so I understood what was happening that night because of that faithful Sunday school teacher. And my mother, who was very sensitive to the Lord, she came up to me. I was watching from afar. And she came up to me and she, she said, Bobby, and please don't call me Bobby, all right? Just, I'm, you can call me Bob, call me Pastor Bob, call me for lunch, but don't call me Bobby. All right. But she said, Bobby, would you like to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit? And I said, yes, I would. I walked to the front of that uh, where there people were there praying. There was an evangelist there. And he, he said to me, he said, I'm going to pray for you. And he said, the moment I touch you on the forehead, God's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. I was only nine or ten years of age. He said, lift up your hands. I lifted up my hands. He did everything in the scriptural pattern. He asked 
for God to fill me. And then he put his hands upon me and he prayed for me. And in an instant, in a moment, the Holy Spirit was poured out upon me and in me and through me. I remember it like it was yesterday. All I remember sensing was the presence and the power and the victory of our King. Come on, somebody. And I began to speak in another language that I knew nothing about. I just began to speak in another language. Now, at 10 years of age, I did not really understand how important the Holy Spirit was going to become in my life. I did not understand it. I did not realize that I was going to have to depend upon him every single day of my life, every moment of my life. He has become my companion. He has become my guide. He has become my teacher. Amen. He's become the one. Amen. That I pray, Lord, just anoint me by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I'm just here to tell you, my friend, that the Holy Spirit is real. How many of you realize that once you've experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, You don't question whether it's real. You know that it's real. Come on. And so I want to preach to you today on the subject, Pentecost, should I apologize? Now there are a lot of people today walking around who would apologize for the things that are found written in the Word of God. But how many of you believe that this Bible is our authority? If it's found in the Bible, if it says it in the Word of God, we need to live it and walk in it and believe in it. Amen. And there's a lot of people that would say, you know, I'm not sure about all that speaking in tongues stuff. I don't understand all of that. And uh, there are some people who would even apologize for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But I'm going to answer my own question today. Should I apologize? I'm going to say absolutely not. I will not apologize for anything that's found written in the Word of God. Now let me just tell you about Pentecost today. Pentecost Sunday is the day exactly 50 Sunday, 50 days after Resurrection Sunday, right? In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter 2 on the day that was known as the day of Pentecost, all right? Pentecost is just a big word that means 50, all right? It means 50 days later, 50 days later. And uh, it is incredibly important that we understand about some of these things. Now, let me just uh, take a, a moment to just say that as you go into any field, you're going to have to learn nomenclature. You're going to have to learn new words, right? If you talk about auto mechanics, you're going to have to know what a spark plug, a transmission, and the clutch is, right? If you talk about computers, you got to know what a what a mouse pad is, and a mouse, and a gigabyte, and a hertz, and a I don't know what all. Okay, all y'all uh, computer guys know all of that. And in the spiritual world, there's also nomenclature, the religious world, the way we describe things. And I just want to kind of give a kind of a little basis here today. There are people in the world who call themselves evangelists. Evangelicals. How many have ever heard of that? Evangelicals. You say, well, I don't even know what that means. Well, let me explain it to you in case anybody ever says something about that. The word evangel simply means gospel or good news. And evangelicals are people who believe in the gospel. Is there anybody here who believes in the gospel of Jesus Christ? Amen. I believe in the gospel. That means I believe that Jesus Christ died, was buried, raised again. Come on. And that he has the power to save us if we put our faith in him. I am an evangelical. And then there's another group. They're called charismatics, all right? Uh, Charismatics comes from the word uh, in Greek, the word charisma, which means Greek, which which means gifts, excuse me. And uh, if you read in the book of 1 Corinthians chapters 12 through 14, you're going to find a whole bunch of gifts described there. And I believe that those gifts are for today. Come on. Amen. These gifts did not pass away. They're for today. They're in, in resident inside of believers as the Holy Spirit activates them. We can uh, see those gifts in action in our world today. Those are people who are charismatics. I'm a charismatic because I believe in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And then there are people that are known as Pentecostals. Okay, let me just say that there's 660 million Pentecostals in the world today. 
tell your neighbor, that's a few. <laughs> that's a lot of people, man. That's over half a billion people who believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They call themselves Pentecostals because they're referring back to the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was first poured out and they believe that that experience of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is for them today. And so I want to give you a basic definition of Pentecostal Christians. Pentecostal Christians are those believers in Jesus Christ and His gospel who identify themselves in belief, experience, practice, and priority with the original church born on the day uh, of Pentecost and described in the New Testament. And so I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, nor am I ashamed to say I believe that Acts chapter 2 is for today and can be repeated in Acts chapter 19 and Acts chapter 10. Come on, it's all the way through the book of Acts. And once you know the Holy Spirit, uh, the baptism, you know absolutely that all of these things are for real. And so imagine that there might be some of you here today uh, who are saying, wow, I didn't expect this when I walked into church today. I don't know about these things. I don't understand these things. Listen, you're in the right place at the right time because I'm going to be sharing you the foundation, the basis for what we believe, what we practice over the next few weeks. And I just want to give you the, a couple of, uh, of thoughts for this series, all right? These are foundational thoughts thoughts, all right? How many of you are still with me? First of all, the Bible is the foundational truth for Christianity, amen? I believe that the church of Jesus Christ should absolutely imitate, practice, preach the Bible. Do I have anybody that believes that? If it's in the Bible, we ought to believe it, amen, amen. So the Bible is our basis, right? And then I also want to say that God is a supernatural God. Amen. I get tired of people trying to tell me that my God can't do anything. Let me tell you something. He can call, he can, Jesus Christ can walk on water. Amen. He can raise Lazarus up from the dead. And he can, come on, he can heal the, 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 deaf and the lame. Amen. He is a powerful miracle worker and the scripture says this. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Come on, somebody. Our God is a supernatural God. He's a supernatural God. And so I want to ask, having talked about that, let me just go to right into my first point. Pentecost, should I apologize? Absolutely not. Here's the reason why. Number one, it is biblical. It is biblical. Now follow with me today. The day of Pentecost in A.D. 33 changed the world because it was on that day that the church was born. On that particular day, thousands of Jews from all over the Roman Empire had gathered in Jerusalem to celebrate the giving of the law. Are you with me? They were there to celebrate the day when God gave the law to Moses on Mount Sinai. And how interesting, now follow with me, that the giving of the law happened 50 days after their deliverance from Egypt, all right? 50 days after the Passover came the giving of the law on Mount Sinai. And the Holy Spirit fell on the 50th day after the Passover for a reason. And the word Pentecost simply means 50th, all right? And so I want you to imagine with me what that day in Israel must have been like. People were remembering uh, what it was like when God spoke to Moses on the mountain and gave him the law. And of course, how many of you realize that in, Ju in, in Judaism, the law is the highest, most important pinnacle that they have. It was revered. And how interesting that the God of heaven decided 50 days after he brought them up out of Egypt, redeemed them up out of Egypt, how interesting that 50 days later he gave them the law, which was to guide them and to lead them and to show them how to live. And let's 
look, let's just go back for a moment and let me read to you Exodus chapter 19, verses 18 and 19 as we look at that event uh, that happened so many years before. It says, Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on it in fire. The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke and the voice of God answered him.